Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Stoveside Chats. Um, a day late this week. We normally are here on Wednesdays, but uh, it's Thursday today. So thanks for joining us. Um, my guest today is going to be Chef Ashley Bibbins Boyd of 300 East in Charlotte. Really great restaurant. Been there for a long time, kind of a landmark place. Um, so we're just waiting on her to, hey, Josh Stapleton, um, to uh, join us. Um, next week, uh, we're going to have, there she is. Hey, Ashley. Fine. Hey, can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? I can. It's good to see you. Thanks for joining us today. Good to see you, too. Sorry, I'm uh, trying to position this so that I don't look like a monster. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for being here. Um, yeah, it's been a while since I've seen you. I think the last time I saw you was at the last Piedmont Culinary Guild in 2019. And um, you were breaking down a big fish, I remember. Um, yes. <laughs> I, I can't remember which. It was in one of the demo classes, but you had, you got back there and started working on I can't remember what kind of fish it was, but you did a, it was did a pretty good job. Bass. With it. That's right, striped bass. <laughs> um, well, uh, for the folks that are that are watching, um, tell us a little bit about yourself, how, how you got started in cooking and, and what brought you to where you are today. Um, I grew up in the business. So 300 East is actually a family owned business. My mother um, formed the corporation with my grandparents. They also helped her buy the building. Um, and we've been in business here for 35 years. So I grew up, wow. I grew up doing this. Now, um, how old is the house that the restaurant's in? Uh, 120 years old. Good gracious. That's a lot. Um, my brother and I, back in the 90s, had a restaurant in Chapel Hill, and it was in an old house. And it's cool, but it's a lot of work to it. There's a lot to keep up with. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> it's not ideal. There's a lot, yeah. of, a lot of charm and a lot of, a lot of problems. <laughs> so it's a mixed I understand value. that. Um, now, tell us a little bit about your, your art background and how that applies to what you do now. Um, yeah, I, I moved away for six years and studied art and art education before going back into restaurant work. Um, I think especially, you know, in plating and thinking about how presentation is going to be in the final dish, um, it definitely is sort of my training has focused itself there. Um, and also in how I think about combining flavors, you know, it's not necessarily a visual thing there, but I think about composition there the same way that I did in art. So mm -hmm. it translates. Yeah, for sure. Um, shout out to Jamie Turner, who's just waving in. Hey, Jamie. Hi, Jamie. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, um, I kind of did. I didn't go to art school, but um, I kind of almost went to art school. I grew up sketching a lot and taking art classes and when I found cooking that I could kind of direct that toward cooking and um, yeah there's definitely a connection there now tell us a little bit about 300 East itself um, what style of food you guys are doing right now um, so we we call it American eclectic we're kind of all over the place so we we really do aim to have something for everyone um, so you know we do everything from um, sandwiches and salads to steaks and seafood pasta so it's really it's really sort of a, a, a broad range and you guys do brunch as well right Sundays mm -hmm. Sunday brunch yeah um, <clears throat> talk to us a little bit about um, some of the pivots you guys have made during COVID-19 what have you guys done differently and how's that worked out for you um yeah, it's been a challenge. Every day's every day's new. Um, but you know, we've streamlined the menu a lot um, because really our primary concern over these last few months is health and safety. So in order to be able to really focus on that, um, 
we've taken down the, the range of what we're doing quite a bit. So, you know, shorter, smaller menu, it's really our core items um, and smaller staff. And, um, you know, we've had to reorganize the kitchen completely to account for all the to-go containers and, you know, make, and, and plates, you know, so yeah. it's sort of, it's sort of changed the way we store, the way we, the way we get food in. Um, because our storage situation looks so much different. Um, and, you know, so that's really, um, that's really our focus is everybody staying healthy. We've managed to do that so far, you know, fortunately. Um, but it takes a lot of, it take, it's taken a lot of streamlining to allow us to, to, to really hone in on that. Yeah. Now, do you guys have outdoor, outdoor dining as well? We do. Um, we've got eight tables out front. Okay. on the patio and then we're you know at half capacity inside yeah so we are um, doing indoor, indoor dining as well i saw you, everyone is really doing some you know thinking outside the box and doing some really cool stuff during this time and you guys are certainly no different um i was scrolling through 300 east facebook page and i saw that you guys did like a tv dinner sort of yeah. situation it really cool that yeah tell us about it so fun so we just had piles of to-go containers coming in and um, at the beginning of this supplies ran out on some things we were using really quickly. And so sometimes our purveyors would just send us a sub and we'd accept it because we couldn't do business if we didn't have something to put it in. So we ended up with this box. It came in while I wasn't here and it was these three compartment foil trays. So I kind of like, someone had already ripped them open. I kind of looked at them for a few weeks and then my sous chef, Brian and I decided we were going to do TV dinners with them. So we came, we had this running list of things that we wanted to do. And each week we would, we would do a different one. It's super fun. That's a great idea. That was really, <laughs> really, really cool. Um, and another thing that stood out that's on your menu um, that I wanted you to explain to us is um, sexy ketchup. Oh, <laughs> um, <laughs> I love sexy ketchup. <laughs> yeah, it's very sexy. Um, gosh, where did that come from? That was for, um, oh, we wanted to do corn dogs and tater tots for 4th of July. So I'm like, okay, if we're going to go to the trouble, because like, as simple as that sounds, it's kind of a pain in the butt, you know? Yeah, um, it is. So I'm like, if we're going to take the time to do this, I don't want to just like bring out the Heinz ketchup for it. Like we're going to make the ketchup. Um, That's right. so we did and it smelled up the whole kitchen is amazing. Like I don't, I used to work, um, graveyard shift serving as a server in a diner in Chicago when I was in school, like I'd go to school all week and then Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I'd work overnight from like 10 and 10 at night to six in the morning waiting on drunk people. Um, <laughs> and I would come home at six in the morning and I just smelled like ketchup all over. So I can't stand it. And this, I was over there with the spoon, like just eating it. It's so good. Um, what did you guys do differently to it? Oh my gosh. Um, we started with fresh tomatoes and then it had like a whole range, uh, probably had 10 different spices in it. Um, and you know, the usual sub suspects, some um, brown sugar and, um, and, vinegar and it was it was so many different things in there but it was so complex and um and just so fragrant i love it that's cool so, so you guys took it past, took it past cloves and other spices kind of warm spices and that sort of thing i'm sorry i lost you there i said you guys took it past just cloves i guess in the in the ketchup yeah honestly i can't even remember what went in there <laughs> it was a long list. Yeah. So, um, I'll send you the your, recipe later. That'd be great. I love that. I love making homemade ketchups for <laughs> sure. Um, uh, now I know you started in pastry. Now you've moved, you're, you're doing like savory foods as well, right? So I, I took over about two years ago, I took over as culinary director. So okay. I'm, I'm overseeing the menu and, you know, doing the features and sort of driving the direction 
of the menu as we, you know, try to stay relevant, you know? Yeah. That's actually, that's one of my questions I have. What do you, um, what do you do in a normal scenario to stay, you know, relative after 35 years and then compounded with COVID? What do you do on top of that to stay more relative? Um, well, compounded with COVID is a loaded question. Um, we've been working for a while, you know, to sort of take our core menu items that people are really attached to. Um, and we feel we can't, don't want to take off the menu as dated as they might be. And just sort of trying to, you know, each year make sure that we're doing that dish with as high a quality ingredient as we can. So it means that the dish does change over time. Like we have some items that have literally been on our menu for 35 years. Um, but we just try to adapt them almost imperceptibly to current taste. You know, if you ate our usual chicken salad sandwich 35 years ago and you ate it now, it'd be a completely different experience. But they don't know that, you know, <laughs> because we just sort of like inch it forward a little bit each year. Um, yeah. So, you know, instead of cheap hoagie rolls, we're using a Duke's, you know, local hoagie and um, Joyce Farms chicken and the chicken salad where it started out being um, processed turkey cubes, you know, in 1986, yeah. <laughs> things like yeah. that. So, um, so it's inching, inching those items toward, you know, flavor profiles of today and then, you know, finding the things that don't lend themselves to seasonality at all and taking those off and putting things on the menu rotation that are able to take advantage of local seasonal ingredients. Um, and then, you know, always having something fun as far as a feature that is, is sort of presenting the best flavors of the season and flavors of our region. Yeah. Yeah. And you're, you're, you're I love, I love how your menu reads, um, you know, definitely, some Southern influence. You guys are obviously big on local and it also has kind of a, kind of a cool classic California cuisine vibe to it as well. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. If that's just me, but I grew up cooking in the nineties a lot. And it kind of has that cool sort of old school vibe to it and very modern in a lot of ways as well. Um, now you guys, you said that you're kind of all over the place. What, um, what's influencing you right now? What style of food or what, cool new ingredient are you playing around with or is next on your, on your list? <clears throat> um, wow. That's a loaded question. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that is a tough question to answer. Right? Yeah. Well, I, this week we're playing with um, sort of the, the late summer into fall veggie range that we're seeing. So, we're not, I wouldn't say we're necessarily working on vegetarian dishes, but we're taking, you know, the dragon beans and the corn and the okra and the squashes from the range of, you know, summer squash into, you know, delicata and butternut and the hard squashes and seeing what we can come up with as far as veggie forward dishes um, and letting those talk to us. So like yesterday we did, um, we were working on a chard, salad of late summer veggies so we did um on the grill some delicata squash and some charred corn and some um charred okra some charred red onion and then we tossed those in a in a vinaigrette with some pickled corn um and put it over like a creme fresh based ranch on the plate um it was really, really good. So, and then we, it needed, it needed, it needed some bacon fat croutons. So we did some cornbread fried in bacon fat on top, even though we originally planned for it to be a vegetarian dish and that kind of took it over the top. <laughs> hey, so, you know, what are you going to do? Um, yeah. But we now, have after, after uh, service, so. Yeah, that, that's right. It's like, um, it's, there's two different ways of thinking. It's like getting through the day, making sure everybody's safe and healthy right now. And then like, I almost can't think about the food and progressing until after everything's quiet, you know? So. Yeah. I can imagine it's hard to be, um, I don't know, easily to be distracted and not as right. creative and, or, you know what I mean? Inspired as, as you normally are under, under normal 
normal conditions. Now, sure. um, I know that for a lot of folks doing curbside and stuff like that, people kind of gravitated toward comfort food. And we saw that after the 08 um, market crash. Do you think that will continue now for a while? you think people want to eat kind of comforting foods or what's your take on that? I don't know. It was weird for us. Um, you know, I can't say a whole lot of good has come out of this. There's a lot of bad to see, but one of the things that was surprising to me about while we were shut down and doing to go only is I feel like we were able to do some of our best food, which was crazy. Like not, I didn't expect that, but um, having to, having to slow down and having like some extra quiet to think about that stuff and people responded to it. I mean, we would do, fe we, we would do three or four features every single day whereas normally we have time to do one um, mm -hmm. and we would sell out of all of them. So it was, it was a weird time and people responded to, to us, you know, doing some different stuff, which was cool. And the comfort food too. Yeah. I think we, we really focused on doing things family style, which may be where the comfort came in, you know? Um, and yeah. we did the TV dinners. That was, that was fun. But, you know, I think we were able to innovate a little bit while we were doing to go only. And, yeah, I think um, right now people are sort of back to eating the core menu items that we are known for. Like they waited a long time to come back in and eat those. So, yeah, well, you know, you're right. Not, not a lot of good has come out of this, but there's been a lot of innovations out of this. That's for sure. You know, and yeah. um, uh, actually I just wrote an article this morning for our newsletter about how restaurants are going to look different moving forward. And, you know, it's, um, as you know, incredibly challenged to be a restaurant owner to begin with and compounded with all the other extra measures that you have to go through. Um, and hopefully people are wearing masks coming into your restaurant. Um, for the most but, part, uh, we say something yeah. real quick if they're not. Good. <laughs> Good for yeah. you. Good for you. Well, listen, I, I know you're busy. I appreciate you taking a few minutes to talk to us. Um, and one other thing I wanted to point out, I was looking on your website and you guys have a section that's called where, where we buy or who we buy from. Um, and mm -hmm. that's really cool. I, um, I really appreciate you guys doing that. I know that using local is important to you and it's cool that you guys highlight, um, those relationships that you have built. And I know that your customers appreciate that as well. Thank you. Thanks for taking the yeah. time. You bet. Thanks a lot, Ashley. Talk to you soon. All right. Bye, Chad. Bye-bye. All right. That was chef Ashley Bivens Boyd from 300 East in Charlotte. Um, again, I'd say a Seminole Charlotte restaurant. They've been open since 1986. Always doing a great job. Um, so tune in next week. We're going to have Chef Bobby Zimmerman, my good friend from Wilmington, North Carolina. He has a great restaurant called um, True Blue Butcher and Table. He's doing some really, really cool stuff. Um, he's going to be talking about Koji and glutamines and all kinds of cool stuff. Um, he is a really, um, really fun chef, very creative, very cerebral in his approach to cooking. So looking forward to that conversation and looking forward to you guys tuning in next week. Thank you. Bye.